Hi everyone, welcome to Go to Chicago. I'm going to talk to you about something called digital nudge. And I want to start with a number, right? 35,000. What do you think that number is? 35,000 is the number of decisions that we make every single day. It's a lot of decisions, right? It's about one decision every two seconds. So one, two, you've just made a decision. And I hope it's to keep watching to this. Let me start with something simple, right? Right now, we are immersed in the digital world. We use Google all the time, we use search engines, we use GPS devices, we use smartphones and wearables. So think about it, if you go to Google right now and you search for where to eat in Chicago, you will get 297 million results. And Google even humiliates us telling that it calculated that in 0.87 seconds. That's a lot of results. Which result do we click on? Research shows that 91.5%, which is 9 in 10 people, click on a result from the first page. So do you think that out of 297 million results, if you've just clicked on a result from the first page, do you think that you made that decision or do you think that Google made that decision for you? A lot of these decisions are decisions that we make unconsciously. We don't even know that we are making those decisions and we've been delegating and we've been using technology to help us make those decisions for us. Amazon has patented recently what's called anticipatory shipping, which is pretty much to sell you something before you even bought it. So think about it. Imagine a situation where you want to buy something on Amazon. Amazon has been watching all your data and what you've been searching for and it has all your data so it knows what you want and then suddenly something arrives at your door and you open the box and you go like wow I really wanted to buy this thing so it's already been shipped to you and you haven't even bought it would you keep it or would you return it to Amazon so among these 35,000 decisions you make every single day how many of those are digital decisions digital decisions are decisions we make using a digital device or are decisions that we fully delegate to a digital device. Out of the 35,000 decisions we make every day, the majority of them are actually unconscious decisions. We make them using our fast brain. And we have two brains, right? It's not like we have two physical brains. It's like as if we had two apps running on our brain. One is called the fast brain, and the other one is called the slow brain. The fast brain makes more decisions because it's fast, but it makes mistakes. The slow brain can make less decisions a day, but it actually it is more accurate. And who's saying this? It's not me. It is a Nobel Prize winner called Daniel Kahneman. He wrote a book called Thinking Fast and Slow, where he explains these two brains. And he has a system that he calls System 1 for the fast brain and System 2 for the slow brain. In order to give you an idea of what I mean and what Daniel Kahneman means by the fast brain and the slow brain, I've lived in Australia for eight years. And a funny story about Australia as well is, my name's Fabio, right? And Fabio is a very common name in Brazil particularly, which is where I was born. But the name Fabio, it's like Pele. If I say the word Pele to you, what's the first person that comes to your mind? Of course, it's Pele, the football player, right? The soccer player. This is the correlation that our fast brain makes. Pele, soccer player. So the funny thing is that my name Fabio in Australia, it only correlates to one person, right? There is this one guy who's very famous in Australia and no one else names their kids Fabio because of this guy. So every time I said my name was Fabio, this is what people pictured in their minds. This is the closest I got to Fabio. Does it look like Fabio? <laughs> so you must be wondering, why am I talking to you so much about these fast brain connections that we make I'm talking to you about this because I read a book about 10 years ago that's completely changed my mind. It's a book called Predictably Irrational from Dan Ariely. And in this book, Dan actually talks about what's called cognitive biases. And he talks about cognitive biases using something that we are very used to, which is optical illusions. And another research that Dan talks on this book, it's a number that in Austria it's 99% and in Denmark it's 4%. What do you think this number is? When I ask people this question, I've actually had a very clever answer. Someone said, it's the number of Austrians. And I was wondering, this is very clever. But this is actually the number of organ donors. 
It's amazing how in Austria, 99% of people are organ donors, whereas in Denmark, only 4%. And the magic around that, it's something called the default. This is a very, very powerful cognitive bias called the default bias. I call these the do-nothing decisions. And think about how many of those do-nothing decisions are being made for you at this very moment and you don't even know about them. So for instance, on Netflix, if you're watching a TV show, and I love this one, it's called Black Mirror. If you're watching a TV show and you're watching an episode and the episode has just finished, Netflix shows you something that says, next episode playing in five, four, three, two, one, and it automatically plays the episode for you. This is a functionality called autoplay. And one of the things that I've noticed, because I work with technology since 2001, it's been about 19 years since I've been working with technology, I've been the one behind the scenes creating these things that influence us. So I've decided to actually show you the hidden forces behind everything that influences us, like on Netflix, for example, the autoplay uses a default bias to actually say if people who are watching us, if they don't do anything, if they do nothing, we will just keep showing the next episode. This is the power of connecting behavior economics and the human irrationality that Dan Ariely talks about and actually the digital world. These two forces combined are very powerful to influence what you are doing online. Think about what happens in 60 seconds online. 3.8 million search queries on Google, almost 700,000 hours are watched on Netflix in only 60 seconds. It's unbelievable. This is a graph from 2019 showing everything that happens on the internet in a minute. But recently I went to the MIT and I went to this area at the MIT that was talking about the number of information you get when you study at the MIT. It's like as if you were trying to drink water from a, from a fire hose. Like there's so much water coming out of the fire hose that you cannot ingest, you cannot drink all of that water. So trying to consume all that content that we have online, it's like trying to drink all that water, right? You will end up like that. On the book Digital Nudge, what I talk about is about a job that I see coming in the near future, which is a digital content nutritionist. And UX people, right? I don't know if there is any UX people watching this. I hope there is. User research and user experience are hugely powerful things when you're trying to influence people. Because I work with technology, I've actually noticed that developers combined with the UX people have so much power to influence us that I've made the correlation from behavior economics and I've called the UX term, I've called it the digital decision architect. It is someone who has the power to influence people to make digital decisions. Lemonade is a very successful insurance company I wanna mention here. Remember Dan Ariely, the guy that I've mentioned that it's one of the fathers of behavior economics has been named the Chief Behavioral Officer of Lemonade. Then has a job which is like the executive of human behavior. And it's so powerful to treat human behavior as one of the most important things when trying to build a digital product. One of the amazing things that's happened to me was the fact that I met Dan, right? In 2015, I was actually introduced to Dan and he became like a mentor, a coach to me. And he's helped me along this whole journey around like the Digital Nudge movement and the Digital Nudge book, that it was amazing to meet him. He's a very, very nice guy. He, he has a, a very interesting story if you wanna know a bit more about Dan because the what's got him very passionate about behavior economics was the fact that he was burnt, like almost more than 50% of his body was burnt when he was a teenager and he started running experiments with himself. So not only Dan Ariely, but also Richard Taylor and Castelstein are two other of my, my inspirations in life. And Taylor and Sustine, they wrote a book called Nudge, which is, it's actually given uh, Taylor the Nobel Prize in 2017 because they've connected economics with human behavior and human psychology for us to understand what is it that influences us. To put it very simply, Nudges are small and powerful interventions in the environments where we make decisions. It's tiny little things that we change in the environment. For example, the autoplay feature on Netflix, it's a nudge because it's nudging you to watch the next episode 
and it's actually using a cognitive bias, which is the default bias. If you don't do anything, if you do nothing, you will watch the next episode. Of course, you can get out of it. You can actually opt out and say, I want to stop. But if you don't do anything, you will watch it. So nudges are very powerful. And the book Nudge from Richard Taylor talks about how powerful it can be. It's not by chance that he was actually given the Nobel Prize. And what I've done is that a few years ago, because I work with technology, I started correlating the nudge theory with the digital world. And I coined the term digital nudge, which is exactly the use of the nudge theory and behavior economics in the digital world to influence people to make decisions. The digital nudge theory is a theory for two groups of people. People who create the digital world, which I call the digital decision architects, they are not just UX people, right? They are anyone who create the digital world. Could be a product owner, could be a product manager, developers, anyone who actually works on a team who's creating technology is a digital decision architect. And also the digital citizens. I think all of us here are digital citizens because we have a digital device. We live in the digital world because especially now in this moment where we are from home and we are isolated in quarantine, we've been more and more digital citizens than ever. The Digital Nudge book has been extremely inspired by a few other books and scientific papers. And here I've separated seven books that really inspired the Digital Nudge book. And if you've read any of these other books and you've liked them, it's very likely that you will like the Digital Nudge book as well. Have you read any of these books? A lot of people come to me and they ask, Fabio, if I know this digital nudge theory and if I know the behavior economics and the cognitive biases and all these hidden forces, can I manipulate people? And I say, yes, I say you can definitely manipulate people. These things are very powerful things that can be used as weapons or it can be used as tools to help or to harm people. There are actually a very, very huge power and responsibility of the digital nudges. And this is what I want to talk to you about right now. Nir Eyal, who wrote a book called Hooked, he talks about two types of influences. There is one type of influence, which is called persuasion, which is about influencing people to do what they need and they want. This is good influence. But there is also what's called coercion. It is influencing people to do what they don't want to do and they don't need. This is the bad influence. If you are creating digital nudges, if you are influencing people to do something, in the digital world, you should be thinking whether you are using persuasion or if you're using coercion. There's a very nice website called The Dark Patterns put together to actually show a lot of coercion, a lot of the bad nudges that people actually try to influence people. Because I was so passionate about understanding the difference between persuasion and coercion, I started the movement called the Digital Nudge for Good Movement. One very powerful digital nudge for good is a continuous glucose monitoring system. I have a friend who has diabetes, Greg, and he used to tell me that when he, he was in meetings, it was actually very hard for him to keep the focus and just keep paying attention to the meetings because he was being distracted by things like, should I take my insulin right now? What should I be doing right now? What decisions should I be making right now because I have diabetes? So this is an amazing technology where you can actually delegate that decision and it will tell you when to take the insulin and it will tell you when your glucose levels are actually uh, different from what it should be. By doing that, we actually release that power of cognitive load from our brains and we just know that we have to pay attention to something else. Talking about diabetes, I want to mention a company called Quintech. Quintech is a company that uses machine learning and artificial intelligence to help people with diabetes make better decisions. You must be wondering, okay, Fabio, if I work with technology, what should I do to create digital nudges for good? So I was a digital transformation advisor for the Australian government. The digital transformation at the Australian government was driven by principles. Something called the digital service standard was created with a few principles to guide the digital product creation in all the agencies and areas of the government that was creating digital products. And I want to tell you, like my favorite one was actually principle number one, which was to understand user needs. 
no one would create anything before understanding which need that thing was resolving. Another very interesting framework that I want to mention here as well, it's the digital nudging framework. This framework was created in the University of Liechtenstein by Marcus, Christoph and Jan. It defined five very well defined steps in order for you to use behavior economics and to use the digital nudge theory in order to influence people. I will talk a lot more about this digital nudging framework during our masterclass. As part of the digital nudge theory, I talk about what's called the five digital consciousness skills. And one of them is to have the knowledge of the unconscious biases, right? Right now we have so many biases that are influencing our behavior that it's quite important to understand them. I only spoke to you about one bias called the status quo bias. This is the bias that influences you to keep watching a TV show on Netflix by just doing nothing. But think about how many other biases are influencing you right now. This is a codex of all the cognitive biases that exist and that have been mapped in the world. It's over 160 biases. It's a lot of them. So one of the skills that I think are quite important for us to know is the fact that we are being influenced by these biases every single day. And if we don't know anything about the biases, we can be manipulated. So I actually, after I studied the, the cognitive biases, I started feeling like that little boy from the movie, The Sixth Sense, that he says that I see dead people. So for me, I see biases. I see biases all the time. I see when I'm being influenced. And the power that this has given me is that now I'm less manipulated because I'm, I have more control over my decisions instead of just being influenced by what's around me. Okay, Fabio, so what now? What should I be doing now? That's a very interesting question. And I want to tell you, you could be part of these two groups, right? If you are part of the group that creates digital products, that create the digital world, which is what I call the digital decision architect, what I suggest you do is that you nudge for good that you understand the digital nudges, that you understand the cognitive biases, that you understand these frameworks of how to influence people, but that you use them for good. If you are a digital citizen, if you live in the digital world, which is very likely because you're watching this talk at this very moment, so you are living in the digital world at this very moment, I suggest that you raise your digital consciousness. Of course, I can give you a lot of content. You will eat a lot of content. You can read the book, you can watch this, you can listen to a podcast, you can watch a, lo a lot of other talks, but I will say that learning is not about absorbing more and more content. Learning is acting. Learning is not just about eating more content. Learning is about eating that content, digesting it and changing your behavior. So my challenge for you right now is to think about these things that you've learned right now and think about out of all these things that you've consumed right now on this talk, what is one action that you can take to improve your life? What is one action you can take to change your behavior for better? Because at the end of the day, learning is not about drinking more water. Learning is about taking a piss. I hope you've enjoyed learning more about Digital Nudge and how powerful this movement can be. I truly believe that if we understand better how we behave and what are the forces that influence us, I believe that we can create a better world for people using technology. And I truly believe that we, if we expand our digital consciousness, we will have better lives. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Cheers.